call the meeting to order and to establish the quorum, we need a roll call. Yep, I will go ahead and call roll. I'll go ahead and start with Commissioner Nagao. Here. Commissioner O'Reilly. Here. Commissioner Buckholz. Here. Chair Cohen. Here. Vice Chair Lee is currently absent and he did allow, um, he did inform us ahead of time. And Commissioner um, Dixit, um, which will be part of my um, update later on in the meeting, um, but she is the new um, representative from Los Altos Hills that was appointed um, about two weeks or about a week ago. And then um, we also have Commissioner Basigi, who is currently absent and hopefully he will be able to join shortly. So we do have a quorum of four commissioners. So now I call the meeting to order. Excuse <laughs> my switching that. So it's time for the Pledge of Allegiance. Can we put the flag up? Yep, hold on one moment. All right, and I will go ahead and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic, the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. I'd like to ask if there are any public comments on items not on the agenda. And we do, um, Chair Cohen, we have one member of the public currently in attendance, and that person does have their hand raised to speak on items not on the agenda. Um, so we can, since it's under 10, we can allot um, three minutes for this particular speaker. Okay. Can we call that person forward now? And the person, uh, Roberta, is the one and only speaker. And Roberta, um, Candice, let me know when you are ready. Yeah, hi. Oh, hi, this is Roberta. Yep, go for it, Roberta. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi. So I just want to speak to you, hi, just real briefly on the, um, the age-friendly city because obviously I'm in favor of being in a friendly city. But what I find today is, is that we are not an age friendly city. Um, you know, the six different criteria we have, we meet none of them. And I think it's important that the senior commission, uh, since the CIP projects are all coming up, uh, support the immediate, um, that you fix the plumbing, because we don't have any hot water at the Grand Park Senior Center, that we fix the electrical panel so that you can have air conditioning. I don't care one way or the other if you have a warming kitchen or full kitchen or whatever, but you know, it's closed by the health department. So there are obviously things that are very unfriendly to seniors in this town. And I would really like you to advocate or if not advocate, uh, you know, advise city council of what the needs of seniors are. And as long as I'm speaking about that, you know, one of the requirements is housing. And I haven't heard anything. We're going through the arena numbers now. And I would hope that, uh, you know, a, a lot of us obviously want age in place, but, um, you know, advocate for low income housing, for housing for seniors uh, so that they can get the help that they need. And that has not been on the radar any place. I've attended all of those meetings. And so I would hope the senior commission would take up, you know, the charge and, you know, the passion for, to represent the other seniors in town to address uh, the needs of seniors here and, um, I know you're going to be meeting with city council. And I hope there's an opportunity that you can take to transmit. You know, I got a lot of phone calls. I've spoken to a couple of your you know, senior commissioners, and I just wanted to get on the record that um, that you know that's what I'd like to see you do moving forward. It's a big challenge. Um, 
But if I don't want to just be an age-friendly city on paper and have a certificate on the wall in Jamie's office, um, but to actually be an age-friendly city, which is a way bigger challenge. Uh, but I know that you're up to it because I know I'm up to it. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for serving. Thank you, Roberta. Now it's time for items under consideration and action. And minutes come first. Did everybody see the minutes? Mm -hmm. Would anyone like to give a motion to approve? I move that the minutes be approved as recorded. I second. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Kevin. And I will go ahead and call. Roll, roll call. Yep, happy to do that. So we have the motion to approve the minutes by Commissioner Buckholz, seconded by Commissioner O'Reilly. I will go ahead and start with Chair Cohen. Aye. And Commissioner Buckholz. Aye. Commissioner Nagao. Aye. And Commissioner O'Reilly. Aye. And it passes unanimously four to zero. Thank you. Is there any public comment on the next item, which is the work plan? And one quick, oh, no, I just wanted to double check because um, um, Roberta's hand was still raised and I wasn't sure if that was in regards to the minutes or not, but she did lower it. So excuse my interruption. <laughs> Can you please just check in with her, Jamie? Um, because I lowered it right after you said that. Oh, gotcha, Candace. Thank you. Um, I will give just one moment to see if there are any public comments regarding the minutes. All right, no hands have been raised, so we can go ahead and move on, Chair Cohen, to the work plan. Thank you. Okay, so our next item is the work plan and you have an attachment that came which included last year's work plan and this the, the proposed current work plan that's going to be for this year and next year so um let's see do, should we move right on to the 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 new one that's proposed what do you suggest no, great. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, we do, it might be good to start with the uh, new um, draft work plan, which Commissioner Buckholz and Vice Chair Lee did work on. Um, I would suggest getting that finalized um, and maybe figure out um, what the um, uh, assignments might be subcommittee wise. Um, and subcommittee wise, it could be um, one, it could be two, it could be a maximum of three commissioners to make sure we're below um, a quorum of commissioners. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that it might be my, <laughs> it might be my um, uh, connectivity. I apologize. I was just saying um, subcommittees can be one, two, or a maximum of three commissioners because it would have to fall below a quorum. So I do suggest let's start there to see and finalize those pieces. Um, and then the next set would be um, finalizing accomplishments, obviously from the past work plan, and then working out the detail of who will be presenting what tomorrow night. So let's start with the draft work plan for 2022-2023. Okay. Bill, would you be available or willing to go over that with us since you would be happy to. Okay, but great. If it can be put on the screen, because I don't want to lose the screen uh, for getting to my copy of the plan. Jamie, can that be put up, please? Yeah. Yep. So this is the previous year's work plan. Right. We want the current. We want the one going forward. If you go down. I believe the twenty two twenty three plan is below that. Hold on one moment.
Great. Um, Commissioner Lee and I went over the format and tried to make the concentration on age-friendly uh, certification to include all of the various projects that we have had before, as well as all of the elements for certification, there's eight domains. Arbitrarily, we um, assigned people uh, to these various um, elements. Uh, and I think probably we're gonna have to get consent um, among the adults um, for the uh, taking on these. These, um, the first part is obviously engaging CAFE um, to do the heavy lifting. They have the experience and the sub issue on that is cash. Who will fund this? Their current MOU is in the uh, $23,000 uh, range, I believe. Uh, their expertise certainly is in the focus groups. And I think part of our responsibility as a commission is to help uh, locate people who would be willing to act in a focus group who are both senior and um, loyal, if you will, to the city and look at the city as an overall um, area that needs to be recertified. Um, the, can you go down on this a little bit? Wasn't, because there's more. Yeah, these are, these are the different um, elements in the uh, age-friendly uh, eight domains. So go back up. I'm not quite sure the best way to present this to the commission. Tony will not be available. And so he asked me if I would um, be willing to present it. The social participation, certainly the uh, Parks and Rec uh, has a supremely good program set up. Transportation, uh, there is the ride payment. And I believe that um, commissioners, the CG and O'Reilly had been looking at that before. Um, so is that something that um, you would be willing to continue? Oh, you're asking the, you're asking. the responsibility for looking at the issues of transportation. Yes, yes, uh, we've been involved with that, and that makes sense that uh, we continue. Um, the next one is community and health care. Uh, the, in the current uh, Washington Post is a superb article on the nature of the virus mutations. And if you can get a hold of that, I think it would be well worth it. But there will be, in fact, there are auditions right now and various uh, identified mutations, uh, other endemics. And the fact that the boosters um, decline in effectiveness within um, 10 weeks. And again, if you're really interested, I've got the New England Journal article that I can send people if they want. So that would be certainly one of the, the plans for our work. And I guess uh, uh, Commissioner Cohen, would you be willing to work on this uh, perhaps with me? Yes, I would. So put, let's put the both of us down 
Okay. Buck, Holson, Cohen. Yeah, let's try to assign each thing. Let's see if we can do that with missing people. It's going to be a little bit tough, but we'll try. Well, do you know the rule that if you're not here, you're the one yeah. assigned to peeling potatoes? Yeah. You're being right. pretty soon, yeah. Um, right, and, and we have to remember this is a living document. It's not in stone and things can be changed. So correct. we can have a draft of this and present it tomorrow night and then it can change, it can move. Well, as it, it's um, mentioned status, uh, pending action and plan details. So we don't have to have a, a full plan on how to um, make sure everybody uh, stays healthy. Uh, the housing issue, as uh, the person who spoke for, from the public, really is a big deal. There is a, another commissioner uh, in the environment, uh, David Klein, who is really expert uh, in this area. And I don't, I, I think that one of our strategic plans was to get a task force that would be more nimble in meeting and doing things uh, comprised of people with experience in the various uh, areas. Okay. So I, we would certainly need some members of the uh, senior commission on that but there would be outside people uh, who might be able to serve well. Um, I met a woman uh, who's on the library commission. Uh, she's from India and a psychologist, and she is just filled with ideas of senior well being. So I would uh, nominate her as, as part of this task force. Bill? Yes. There's a initiative going on in town and many towns around the state. I think about the housing element. They're working on this diligently. And I'm wondering if we could consult with them and find out, you know, they might take, they might subsume this under their project. I'm not sure what we would have to do with it, but if we can make a connection with them, but there's a huge group. And um, Lynette could, um, fill us in on that, maybe not right now, but it might be something that we would collaborate with the housing element project on. That, yeah, that would be ideal. Yeah, I, I would agree. We would join <coughs> an, an uh, existing group uh, and bring our, our uh, perspective to it. But but uh, this has been going on and it's, yeah, I agree. It's There's a lot of, a lot of uh, things in motion in housing. Jamie? So perhaps we could put uh, form an alliance with uh, this housing group in the assignment. Um, and then do we need to add people to that list? Uh, about the count, uh, commission oh, members? Bill, Jamie had her hand up. Maybe she, no. has a com she has a comment about this. Yeah, please. You um, actually, commissioners, you got there um, just about on your own. And I do apologize. My dog is snoring right next to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> um, but you guys got there all on your own. And I think an element of this, as you've already identified, there is a, a component in a group that the um, city is currently working on and with. And so I think for the purpose of the senior commission's work plan, maybe it is assigning one or two commissioners to stay abreast and make sure that they're aware of what work is being done, particularly on that topic and reporting back to the commission or if there are opportunities for feedback or being a part of that process then I think um, bringing it back and making sure that the commission then forwards information to help inform those um, processes. I, I definitely see that um, as being something that is very real and doable that the, this commission can do. And um, as the commission has really identified, this is a very large topic and would, um, it, you know, I think it is something that the city is already working on. 
Should you, you, then, you say the full name of that commission, that committee, or that group? What is the full name of it? You used initials, but I don't know what those stand for. Oh, um, I and actually, it's uh, a housing element. If you don't mind, Jamie. Yes, you, absolutely. Okay, Go it's our it. housing element, and we're working on the housing element. And much like Parks Commission has been taking an active role in letting this council know um, what is important on um, the park side, such as Grant Park and, and um, making sure you had a speaker earlier that spoke um, stating on um, the importance of facility improvements. I think the important is that the senior commission should be taking a similar role in truly understanding the needs of seniors in housing. Um, in addition, I think what she was stating or commenting towards is because when we have developments that come before us, um, I have been advocating for more low affordable units. Seniors have a fixed income. So I am concerned about making sure that if we have affordable units, it's possible that individuals with fixed incomes or limited income could still be able to afford housing in one of our below market rate units. Um, I, it's not really where one senior commission participates, it's understanding the issues of senior housing and making us aware of it. So I think um, how what I have observed in other cities, and I'm not giving you direction or I'm just trying to help you understand how your commission can be a little bit more um, active in achieving your, your um, points as far as this age-friendly um, effort you are moving on. And I think that's what the speaker was also stating is that, you know, you're, you're I mean, your effort to work with various commissions to ach achieve some of this. So I think it's like similar to how you have been, the commission has been playing an active role in, in, in what is needed for senior programming. And that's how they undertake what they can recommend regarding um, social, social participation. Um, it all goes together in all the other aspects of becoming age friendly. I hope that answers your question. Does that, or do you have any clarifying questions I could help you with? Uh, Councilwoman uh, Liang? Yes. How would you best phrase, if, since we have to present a document, um, the work plan uh, element here, would it be to have active liaison uh, liaison with the housing element that would be the the work if you will for the senior commission uh, what's the best way to phrase that attending the 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 um housing element meetings is one aspect of being engaged regarding housing issues with the city, but studying how um, other cities have, um, has encouraged their council to really understand the need for senior housing, advocated for projects that are, um, for addressing the needs of seniors. I mean, you have um, Palo Alto as well as Cupertino who have multiple senior facilities coming up and senior housing projects coming up. 
but I don't see a lot occurring within our city. And I think that's something that um, the senior commission can, um, can either have members of um, your senior commission have a subcommittee and reach out to the senior commissions of other cities or to go look at how um, other neighboring cities are, are um, addressing senior housing needs and having that implemented within their city. Does that answer your question? Um, yes. So the individuals whose names might appear in this space would be tasked with uh, remaining uh, current with the, the Housing Alliance and as well as other local municipalities doing for uh, affordable housing in Los Altos. Correct. Not necessarily affordable, but um, how they can well, for address. Senior housing. Yes, yes. For seniors specifically. Correct. Because yeah. that's the focus of your commission. Right. Yeah. Evan, would you be willing to consider putting your shoulder to this wheel? Well, I. In I I think we'd probably take, you know, if we're going to look at other other cities, I think maybe two of us ought to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but Kevin and someone else. I think else. That, that's one of the things we you could learn a lot from other communities um, around us or maybe even further away. But um, this, is, this is a big issue. I think probably two people, I'd be willing to be one of them. Mm -hmm. You've been working with Basenji um, on the transportation. Would that be... Uh, adequate, do you think, for the, the the two of you to work with this? Well, I'd be willing to. I uh, I realize he can't refuse. Really defend, I, I guess I could sign him up. I... <laughs> uh, sub, subject to his uh, uh, agreement. And Jim is on the call. Um, he was able to join. Oh. Um, and we, we just have to see if we can unmute him. Want to ask him, Bill? Yes, um, Jim. Are you able to uh, speak with us? Just working on trying to get him unmuted. Jim? Yeah, no, uh, we're still having trouble getting him on. What, why don't we go on to the next topic um, and then uh, work with that. Um, yeah. The outdoor spaces and buildings, um, really whatever is done with housing and transportation will impact positively uh, for seniors in terms of outdoor spaces and buildings. So I don't know if we can uh, have that yeah. nested in it or or not. I um, uh, have a question. Uh, outdoor spaces and buildings, is that, that I, I read that and that refers to uh, outdoor spaces and buildings that are part of the uh, community property, part of the, like parks and um, Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Like the, the senior center or the, the community center and the, the uh, Grant Park area. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I'm reading that. But, uh, you know, I need a little help or a suggestion. Is that is that what's, what what people had in mind when, when this arrived in, on projects? Outdoor spaces. Said, we're not talking housing in that one. At least that's what I, uh, I read that separately. I, I agree with that. And in addition, um, all the parks and recreation. So we could work collaboratively with parks and rec on this element. Yeah. Uh, Jim is a yeah, lead. Jim uh, BCG be, is a, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. To be sure that we can um, 
discuss the senior needs. This, we have to always focus on the senior. The Parks and Recs is everybody from birth to just before death. Right. And so we want to focus on the 50s plus or whatever the age we, we agree to, which is still a little bit flexible. But I think, I think it's the outdoor spaces too, the parks and all that. Yeah. Do you, do you, Kevin? Yes, uh, you know, just I was going to mention that um, the Park and Rec is working on a master plan for the Grant Park property, and uh, and Jim is a, uh, Jim Basigi's uh, liaison from the uh, uh, Senior Commission to that project, okay. with uh, exactly what in mind, uh, what what you what you're talking about, uh, bringing the senior perspective and use. Uh, uh, to the table when that's being discussed and designed. Well, so he's one of the people that would be on that on that line. Yes. And Chair Cohen, um, I, I'm not sure we were able to unmute him. Um, Commissioner Basigi does have his hand raised. Okay, we can't. I can't see him. Go ahead. I'll m move my. Can you hear by any chance? Yes, we can hear you, Jim. Right. Okay. Glad to hear that. I, I want. I want to make. Comments. Number one, in regard to the housing, I really believe if you want to do the job well, it takes more than two people uh, because we need to do a more or less 360 degree study of all the communities around us, at least the two or three important ones. And that's, that's no, no light task by any stretch. The second thing, there's a spectrum of housing needs for <laughs> that we have to look at, including the um, dependent housing, independent housing, um, uh, Senior issues, Commission, we'll not ask me. Affordability and well, other. The beginning. Hello? Can, can you hear me? Yes. So there, is a, there are a lot of issues involved. My sense is that this really requires a, a subcommittee of about three people. Uh, I'm, ju I'm just pulling a number out of the air. But I think that in, in order to do a sufficient amount of work, so we can come up with a uh, some kind of meaningful recommendation that we can present to the to the council or to the housing element people and so forth. It really requires a, a significant amount of work. That's that's my two bit on, on this issue. Uh, the second thing while I have your attention is the issue of parks and rec. I haven't done anything at all in that regard and I'm sorry about that. And, uh, and please give me some kind of a deadline by which this needs to be done. And I'm going to get very busy on it because I, I'm, on, I'm also, in addition to this, I happen to join the fire district commission as a commissioner. So <laughs> I, that's a heavy, heavy lifting. So I've been, you know, my, my attention has been spread and I'm sorry about that. I will refocus back. And, uh, but I just need to know if you have any deadlines that you, you, by which you want to have that work reach a some level of completion, I will, I will put my shoulder to the wheel as you, as you said earlier, Bill. Um, well, given the vastness of what you're commenting on, which is all true, I think smaller bites uh, are gonna be necessary. And given your uh, volunteerism extending into so many different areas um, that if we have only two people in housing, it has to be with very modest aspirations and uh, recognizing it's going to be a long-term um, area and that the uh, Parks and Rec with the senior center there uh, will be a doorway into the information uh, as will the um, housing uh, element. Right. Yeah, Bill, to, to chime in on your comment, if I may suggest, please deselect me from the housing element because it's largely the focus of the Los Altos, not Los Altos point. My thought would be that if you get some other volunteers to, uh, to basically join up that particular subcommittee, it might be more effective but um, that being said, I'm willing to I'm willing to be a part. So. so we so we need a third person. Correct. Um, any volunteers? 
Commissioner Cohen could be the person. I'd like to I'd like to make a recommendation. Commit. Um, Commissioner Cohen is not volunteering for that committee, but I would like to make a recommendation. And that is that we do a first sweep of all of these elements. Let's see who's interested in what and sign people up. Let's see where the blanks are. We can fill in the blanks the best we can. We are missing two people from the meeting today. So um, that would be my recommendation. Instead of getting stuck on one thing, the thing about the housing, I do think it's huge. And I do think um, that it's very important. However, I would like to point out, in my opinion, we should go back to the reading of the elements of the age-friendly cities and focus on that and collaborate with the housing element group and seeing what, what the melding could be. You know, we don't want to be out there doing our own thing and all, investigating all the other cities if, if that's what the housing element's doing. Yes. And we yeah. could just do a little bit of it or just our part of it. I just think it's it's getting it's getting bigger than our whole committee and, and it's taking over the other elements. So that would be my recommendation. Let's do the let's just go through them. Would other people agree with that? Yes, and I I agree. I think that um, we are mainly going to be a conduit of a position advocating for seniors to these other existing groups. That's that's my take on it. I I think Commissioner Cohen, I think that was very well said. I I completely agree with you. I think we need to do a systematic approach to this whole set of issues that um, by the way, may I add a comment? Uh, this is not the first time senior committee has faced the housing issue of for seniors. Uh, I've been on the commission on the commission for better part of seven years, six and a half years. Uh, we went at it about uh, you know pretty pretty hard about four years ago. Uh, I think those are prior to many of the members that are currently on the commission had um, having joined. So and we were. I, I hate to say it, uniquely unsuccessful. Ult ultimately, we end up giving up saying that this is too big a problem and needs to be addressed by this by the city council of both Los Altos and Los Altos Hills uh, as a uh, independent of the, uh, the senior commission and then they can draw on senior commission as need be. I think we are changing that a bit right now. We are saying that a senior commission needs to be proactive and take a leading role in this. And I totally agree with that. But I, I think if you want to do that job well, it really, we need to do homework. We need to do a lot of homework, uh, you know, and so <laughs> I humbly submit to you that I think two people may not be enough. Okay, it sounds like we're getting down to uh, our role is advocacy rather than solving problems. Um, I think it's both. Well, obviously well, there will be if we're going to advocate, we may even want to advocate for certain um, actions. But as was recognized, this is a, um, a, a an insatiable appetite for discussion, and we have a couple other things to go on to. So let's just leave it as um, an not yet completedly thought out um, element. Mm -hmm. And please, who's ever taking notes. Um, include the comments uh, of both uh, Commissioners Cohen and uh, Basiji, because I think that their points of view really should form a structure for how we actually wind up doing stuff. So can we move on to the next? Mm -hmm. I think the meeting's being vid uh, taped, isn't it? Yes. Audio tape. So we have, we could go back and listen to it. Okay. Bill? Yeah. I, I, so the outdoor spaces and buildings, I think we need to find out what actually is our uh, mandate. Mm -hmm. um, respect and social inclusion. Uh, and this is part where I am not objective. Um, we have a sizable number of seniors who are not electronically connected mm -hmm. 
and do not receive information, nor do they get to communicate. Uh, and this is um, certainly worthy of research and how it's done else, other places. And I'm willing, I've still got a little bit of shoulder pads left. Um, so I'm gonna put my name uh, on that of how do we reach um, people who are not um, networked. And we, we have been working on that in the past, Bill. Yes, I, yeah, I, I, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we, we will continue to look at possible solutions. Uh, civic participation and employment. Um, I'm not quite sure how to separate that from some of the other issue, other elements we have up front. The civic participation is certainly going to be under Parks and Rec. Right. Uh, I don't think anybody is doing job search um, in no. the 70s. <laughs> um, right. We need a comprehensive definition of what that is, what it includes. Yeah. I'm not clear about what that what that yeah. is really. Uh, there is a, a document that gives more detail on what each of these element uh, domains are, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be able to hunt that up. Um, the communication and information. I think that that it will be. Uh, part of Parks and Rec and part of respect and social inclusion. Or let's say overlap sufficiently. So can I say something? Absolutely. I think that we can expand on that marketing aspect with doing more than just Parks and Recs because we do have the farmer's market that we get people who participate in. And there are other things that we can do some brainstorming in order to, and it will touch on reaching some of those people who are unreachable. So right. um, Commissioner Basiji and I, we've got our names down there and we haven't put our heads together yet with the marketing department, but I think that that could be very productive. Wonderful. Uh, Chris, may I, may I ask, may I add a comment to yours, please? Uh, Commissioner Nagaro, I'm sorry. No, nope, good. I, yeah, in my experience, uh, subcommittees are far more successful if they have an, a staff member as a part of the structure. Right, I think in that listing, it's, so, it, right. Yeah, in this case, if, if we can maybe draw upon a staff, and uh, so when we have some committee subcommittee meeting with the staff present, we can come up with really actionable items. That, I agree. So I think if you if that's acceptable to you, uh, perhaps maybe you and I should exchange some emails and try to set up some subcommittee meeting. And also as a part of that, invite a staff meeting to not just come in and keep it, but to be a part of the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I agree. I second, third, and fourth that because the input from staff uh, has the necessary background of working within the system that makes action actually possible. Right. Yep. I so respect, um, uh, Jamie, the things that you've done as well as your colleagues. So um, that's a, a big hooray for doing that. Thank you for bringing it up, uh, Jim. No, I, I think Commissioner, um, just sp stated it very well, so I, we just we just need to follow through. Yep. Okay, so they so we will uh, we the royal we uh, I will be presenting this uh, tomorrow at five to city council, um, representing the senior commission, uh, as this is the work plan for this coming calendar uh, year. And Chair Cohen, um, yes. Council Member Lee Ng has her hand raised. Councilwoman Lee Ng? 
Um, thank you, um, Chair, and thank you, um, Jamie. Um, the one thing I would like to clarify is when you have subcommittee um, meetings and work, subcommittee members can choose to um, meet with staff to get some sort of um, guidance, but it's not, I would like to encourage you that we would like to limit staff time mm -hmm. because our staff is paid staff and this is not an ongoing meeting. The, the subcommittee members are working in which they are supposed to be bringing things back to the commission and the commission would then discuss it at which time the staff would get more engaged in providing some, getting some clarification and direction from the whole commission. And so I think what I have been hearing, I would just like to encourage you that it's, um, and I understand um, the guidance you are looking for, but I would just also like to limit Mm -hmm. how we engage our staff in doing the work of the commission members. Does that help clarify things? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you for that clarification. Thank you. That's really clear. The other thing I would like to make clear is that a lot of these things regarding the budget, regarding the, the arena submission, the housing element, they're all being they're all um, being submitted by um, June, July. And we're getting that budget item back to us in June. Right. Everything is, um, time is of the essence. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention and share that with you. If it requires that your, your efforts might need uh, more attention, you may want to consider having a um, uh, special meeting. The other thing is what I've been hearing on some of the points that were brought up, it's about, um, I've heard a lot of comments regarding the park commission. Did you, when is your joint meeting with the park commission or do you intend to have a joint meeting? Um, and that just is some, suggestions and direction I would like to put out there. Well advised, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, any think, other comments think, or ideas? Do you think this suffices as a, I hate to put, put this forward to the city council tomorrow night as the final and done deal, it's not, we don't have, all the members here. We don't have all the assignments made. We don't have clarification of some of our duties yet. So this is always a work in progress, but I don't know how to present it. Is this a draft work plan? Yes. Okay. Um, that would be good. Or a work plan as of this specific date. Jamie? Yes, that is very well put. And as you mentioned earlier in the meeting, your work plan is a living, breathing document. Your meeting, a uh, joint meeting with city council is to present your, the commission's, you know, desire on what you would like to work on going forward in this next year. The city council and the various council members may have additional ideas um, that the commission may want to consider in that dialogue tomorrow evening. So I think it is absolutely a great idea to indicate that this is your proposed draft. And then you can come back and um, as an example, um, using the library commission, because they did this um, in November of last year, 2021, they finalized most of it. They had their joint meeting with city council and then they debriefed in the following meeting to, you know, take in the comments and the commentary that city council had. So I think it absolutely makes sense to put this forward and to present it that this is your draft of what the senior commission would like to tackle over this next year. 
get ideas and have a dialogue. And then it can come back in, as you said, this is a living, breathing document and you can make adjustments as needed. Thank you, Jamie. Well said. You okay presenting that part of it, Bill? And Absolutely. Tony, Tony tomorrow night's gonna be with you. Oh, Tony, Tony will be tomorrow night? Not today, but tomorrow night he will be. He said he would be. Oh, good. good. Here, Chris, Chris has her hand up. So I would like to plug in on the um, oh, the outdoor spaces and building that we propose a joint meeting with the Parks and Rec and plug that into that space. So it looks like at least we've got a plan and then we should set that up so that we can make something happen. And you wanna join Jim on that committee on, on that part? Is that what you were saying first? Chris? What, no, excuse me, I'm sorry. The question is, did you first say that you're gonna, you wanna be joined on that and then you wanna set up a meeting with Parks and Rec or? Correct, yes. Okay, so you're joining Jim on that committee. So let's plug. Yes, yes. is that okay, Jim? Yes, it is. Uh, we need to, you and I need to exchange uh, emails about this, by the way. Um, I'm not completely clear what the next step ought to be. So we need to talk about it. Commissioner Cowan, Commissioner Basiji, you have not missed anything. There was a, an initial movement on the Grant Park Master Plan, but obviously there has been yeah. uh, obviously lots of things going on in the city. Um, now knowing yeah. this, um, and myself and Candace will keep you apprised as things you. start to maybe move, but at the moment, you both are good. You have not missed anything. Yes. And um, if that is perfect. Um, and then Chair Cohen, um, yes. now that we have done gone through this portion, um, we would need to go um, take public comment on the work plan. Yes. Is there anyone here for public comment, Jamie? We do have one and that is Roberta. And so since there is one, um, we can give um, that, um, we can give her three minutes. Roberta, can you unmute yourself or do you have to unmute her, Jamie? Yep, we have to move her over. Um, and so we will do that momentarily. Okay. Oh, hi, this is Roberta, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, so I do wanna say, uh, which Lynette did say, the, um, the CIP budget, uh, you know, for fixing the, heating and the plumbing situation is coming up in May or June. And the housing element uh, report needs to go to AC, HCD in June. So this is very, very, very time sensitive. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not something that you've got months and months to work on. I think that, you know, if you feel the uh, Grand Park Senior Center needs improvement in the area of plumbing and electricity, I think you should put it in. Uh, I know that the Recre Parks and Recreation Department has put it in theirs. Um, so um, I just want to let you know, this is time sensitive. Um, and, you know, it, and the process will last quite a while, but uh, you, you need to, you know, perhaps have a special meeting uh, and make it clear to council, uh, like, you, you know, in, in the area, say, for example, uh, you know, we want to have the uh, senior center at Grand Park, the building improvements done in the new budget, which is sauce on June 1st. Right. So you do have an opportunity to say, uh, you know, in the, you know, budget starting on June 1st, this is what we'd like to see done. And of course, you can work with staff at that point uh, because they need to do the budgeting on that. Um, but that can be a goal that you have. So that's sort of my recommendation because I do attend the other commission meetings. So I just want to give you a time frame. The other thing, anybody who works on the housing element on our website, on the very, very top, it says housing element. Click on it. It will bring you to links of uh, what's going on with the housing element, 
what it's all about. Uh, they do mention senior housing in it, so I would urge all of you to read it, uh, or at least your subcommittee to read the housing element is on our website. Correct. Okay, thank you. That's, you know, I, I said, I'm, I'm just trying to help give you some time frames and, uh, you know, direction, you know, because again, if you put it in and you decide you don't want to do it later, that's, you, know, you can change it. But if you don't put it in, then they don't know you're thinking about it. They have no idea that it's important to you. So that's my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberta. I think, Jamie, to clarify, in the past, we have advocated for Grant Road to have those improvements made. Right, right. And we formally recommended it. So I think it's on record that we, we would like that to happen, just to clarify for Roberta and for everybody else. Yeah, well, if you, if you don't include it, then they're, they're going to forget about it. They have 90 different things on their plate. <laughs> this is your no. opportunity to put it in writing and put it in front of them. Thank you. May I make a comment? Yes. Uh, yeah. it, we, have, we have been at the uh, improvement for in Grand Park for a very, very long time. And over and over again, some things have been put in, some things were included in budget, some things are not. To be quite honest with you, I think this is where we need the staff to come in and tell us what is has, has been done, what is on the, in, the, in the current budget, what is going to be in the uh, moving on to a next budget, spelling over to a next budget. So the, the subcommittee of the commission can actually decide in realistically how to propose the next set of steps. So that's that's my two bits. Uh, I mean, Jamie can can they chime on that if, if she feels I'm, I'm right or wrong or somewhere in between. I do have some additional information, which I will share in my staff update. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Jamie. Thank you, Jim. Okay, no other public comment, I take it. Um, could I make a comment, um, Chair? I, I yes. think it would be helpful. I think it's as you look at your budget and as you speak to council about your priorities, if items have not been completed or if items are still on the list and it continues to remain a prior priority. Um, example, Grand Park. It is important to keep re-emphasizing and to remind council what the priority are, priority is and what the top priority is. If, if you think you just have to mention it once and we're gonna remember it, it does not work that way. You have to keep mentioning and keep talking about it until the project is done. That's why um, community center, we talked and talked and talked about it until it was done. And it was always on the top of the priority list. So yeah. until it gets done, you have to keep your, your, per, your you know, emphasize your priorities and making sure that council or staff or anyone else understands yep. that. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. And Chair Cohen, um, I think the commission has had a wonderful dialogue on the draft 2022-2023. The last piece that I think the commission may want to consider is just a general overview or recap of the past year. I think that would be a good place to start going into um, opening the um, sharing of the draft document. So we, we know um, Commissioner Buckholtz and Vice Chair Lee um, uh, uh, will be kind of going over this draft um, portion for the 2022-2023. I think it might be good to maybe identify or it could be shared or if you want to identify one or two commissioners that may want to just do a recap of this past year, um, that was my only other suggestion in regards to this topic. That would be the accomplishments that we feel that we made. Correct. Okay. Chris, would you like to speak to that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at a, Stalemate here. I'm not sure what we really did accomplish last year. We we did our we did a lot of discussion, but I don't know of anything that was really. Jamie, help me. Is can you identify? 
No, absolutely. And the, you know, the few things that I will say, and um, just because I, um, uh, I assisted the Parks and Rec Commission, I, I covered the April 13th meeting that they had this past month. And I will say that the commit, um, both commissions, um, which are currently, um, has a staff liaison with uh, recreation and community services, you, you know, the pandemic really did affect what um, each of the commissions, and I will say even what our department was able to do. So um, one of the things that the Parks and Rec Commission um, talked about is that you did receive some presentations and, you know, to continue the dialogue and to inform um, yourselves about what elements, and obviously one of the big ones was having um, Dr. Annabelle Pelham with CAFE do a presentation in July, so that it, that really was the impetus for this commission to then really decide this is what we would like to take on in this next year. So I think that is absolutely one. Um, and then continuing um, to meet with uh, recreation and community services staff. So while, although, you know, it wasn't until October of last year that with the opening of the community center that programs were really starting to kind of come back to in-person. Um, you know, I think it is important to highlight that the pandemic had a very strong effect of you had these well intentions, but you continued that dialogue to inform this next year, which is very big and robust. So while although it was maybe small, it really was a big part of what led into this next year's work plan. So oh, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> wouldn't, I, I wouldn't discount, you know, I, I know it's very easy to sit back and say, well, we met a few times, but what did we really accomplish? And, you, you know, absolutely, you, you, everyone's hands were somewhat tied behind yeah. their backs by the pandemic, and we're now in a position to change that. So I, I think it would be good to highlight that and then dovetail that into what you would like to accomplish this next year. Okay, thank you for that insight. I have, I have two other things um, related to that. One is that based on that information, we made the decision to restructure our work plan completely and structure it after the age-friendly eight elements. So it could give us succinct areas at which we wanted to work so that we could meet the criteria ultimately, the accomplish the goals of the age-friendly cities. Because Los Altos has tried this many, many times, but it's never quite made it. And we wanna make it this time. So I think that was really important. The other thing, and I think Jamie, you might mention it later, is that we, um, we recommended looking outside of the city's budget for money to help fund Annabelle's work and the work of, of her group. And um, a, grant, a grant opportunity came along and was recommended to staff to see if we could apply for this grant. And we did, they did, they went ahead and applied for it um, to the community foundation. So we're waiting to hear that on June 1st. So I think that's a big accomplishment because, you know, we, we, need, to, we need the money. If we don't have the money, we really can't do a lot of this work. So anyway, I think that was an important accomplishment. Thank you. Agreed. So will you start that you'll start the meeting with that and then turn it over to Bill and Tony, Chris. Well, okay. you'll, you'll be starting the meeting and then you can I'll say yeah I'll yeah. welcome introduce everyone the commissioners that are present and yeah and then I'll pick on you and pick on you no pick on you. <laughs> I'll choose you to present the accomplishments and then Bill and Tony. Um, so. Okay, we good on that part? Yeah. Let, me, let me see what the next thing is, sorry. Um, let's see. So the next thing, our commission or subcommittee reports, are there any? They've been included in the uh, plan description. Exactly. <clears throat> okay, are there any, well, the public comments came after that. So 
I'll ask for public comments, but Bill's already presented his subcommittee's work and there's no other commission. So I don't, I think that's good. And now we're up to staff oral reports. All right, thank you so much. I will go ahead and kick us off and then I will turn it, once I'm complete, I'll turn it over to Cherry Anderson, our um, recreation coordinator for Adult 50 Plus. And then Sarah Robostelli has joined us by phone. So I will go ahead and kick us off and a few um, have snuck into some of our uh, discussions earlier, but I am happy and very excited to announce that um, the vacancy that we've had in Los Altos Hills has finally been filled as of April 21st. And I am familiar with her because she is currently serving on the Library Commission, which is also joint between Los Altos and Los Altos Hills. Her name is Shawbury Dixit. And um, it, uh, Commissioner Buckholz has shared just a little bit, but um, have been in contact with her. She unfortunately was not available today, but she is actually going to be in attendance tomorrow evening when the commission does the joint meeting with the Los Altos City Council and then she'll be a part of our subsequent meetings going forward. Um, but she's very excited um, to join this commission because she not only had a passion for libraries, but she has a passion for seniors as well. So I think it's to our benefit that she's join, joining the commission. Also wanted to share and not sure if this commission was aware, but um, Andrea Chelamangos, um, who was our city clerk, has retired. Um, her actual last day in the office was last Thursday. And so I wanted to inform the commission that the interim city clerk is our deputy city clerk. His name is Angel Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. So he be filling in in the interim until a replacement is found. So myself or Angel and the city clerk's office, we are here as resources if the commission has any questions. In addition, to really streamline the process for public comment, um, the, each commission, in addition to city council, has um, they've set up individual um, email addresses, which for us, it is SC, standing for Senior Commission, and then public comment at losaltosca.gov. You actually might have noticed that on the header of our agenda, but um, really it was set up so that public could email at one email address, and then it automatically emails that comment to all the commissioners. So it takes out, it automates the process versus it who then needs to forward it out to the commission and live. The library commission did theirs last week. We'll send out a test email just to make sure that it's working, but you may occasionally get um, a quarantine email. Um, you can disregard that. Staff is uh, monitoring it. So um, obviously with all city emails, there are, um, uh, I will say, softwares in place to catch spam and phishing emails. And so when things of that nature come and occasionally there might be a public comment that gets caught in that. And so staff is monitoring to make sure that if it is a true public comment email that will go out. So that is really exciting because it will streamline that process. Um, and then obviously too, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but this will be our last meeting on Ring Central. We just got all of the information for Zoom. We literally got that early last week, but we didn't get it time to work out all the details. So our June meeting will be on Zoom. I know I see a lot of commissioners doing happy dances and I know it, it just, I know there's been some challenges on the Ring Central format. So we're very excited to make this transition to Zoom. It will make it much simpler for many people. So we will be doing that in June. And then a few have mentioned, but just a few updates on age-friendly. Staff has made the request for the next 
fiscal year, um, but we do need to ensure that we have the approved budget before we execute the contract. So we're, um, that anticipated approval for budget is expected in June, but as uh, Chair Cohen uh, mentioned, there was a grant opportunity through the Mountain View Los Altos Community Foundation. So we did apply um, for $25,000 to fund the work with CAFE. So we are waiting to hear back as far as status to that application. So we will keep the advised um, once we hear back um, from that application process. In regards to grant, I am extremely excited. Um, I got the update from our maintenance services director that shared um, at the April 26th city council meeting. Council actually get, did give direction to staff to start working on the up, some of the upgrades to Grant Park. And the two things that they are going to focus on, first is the electrical upgrade and then the second is the installation of HVAC. So staff is currently getting um, quotes on what that work um, and how much uh, that work would cost. And they will then bring it back to city council for consideration. So they are starting that process um, so that they can get that going sooner rather than later. They have not set a timeline yet, obviously, um, since they were just kind of given that direction um, early last week, but Manny said that they are working on getting that those quotes so that they know the scope of how much that this work would cost. So I'm extremely excited to share that with the commission and as work continues, I will absolutely share updates as I become um, aware of that information. And now on to two final things, and then I'll take uh, questions. Um, our Bunny Bound event that we held on April 16th went extremely well. And I just wanna give a huge shout out to Candace Avena. Um, she and her team worked really hard and Candace helped coordinate that event. We served over 200 families that day the 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. timeframe. It was a very safe, well-attended event. So just wanted to give the shout out to Candice and obviously the many staff members and volunteers that helped with that event. And also a big thank you to the Friends of the Los Altos Library who actually sponsored the goodie bags uh, that we gave away at the event and one of the raffle prizes that we're planning to give away. And finally, summer registration is open. So we want to encourage um, everyone to take a look at what we have to offer and to come and participate and start to register. So before I turn it over to Cherry, I had a lot on my uh, you know, update, wanted to open it up to any questions there might be from the commissioners. And I do see uh, Commissioner Besiji, you have your hand raised. You're on mute. Um, let's get you unmuted. Oh, sorry. May there. I ask my, my, my question now? Yeah, thank you for a very, very wonderful update. This was really, at, at, at least from, from my point of view, it caught me up with, with what's going on. That's, that's wonderful. The second question I have for you, those two items that you mentioned for Grand Park, namely the electrical work and the HVAC, uh, very important things because that's summer is coming up and people need to be comfortable otherwise we're going to have problem so my question to you is that uh, Perry Roberto's comment earlier are those in in a in a proper budget for the, for this work to be done ASAP or is it not so absolutely so the updates to Grant Park are a part of the CIP um, project in the over the next five years I would have to, um, I don't recall which fiscal year it is in, but obviously it does take time at, at process wise, obviously to get the scope of work and to know the, the cost, but it is a part of the CIP program. So okay. yeah. All that work is ahead of us in other words. Correct. But as, again, I am, I'm trying to respect the comment that Roberta made, which is in my view and highly appropriate. Let's make sure that it gets into the budget. The stuff that really is, First, number one is low hanging fruit. Number two is very, very necessary. We got to get those in. And then we can work on, the, um, on the, the roadmap for all the other things that needs to be done. 
No, those uh, comments are definitely well heard. And as has been pointed out during this meeting, it is always good to be the squeaky wheel. And so as much as we can continue to make this um, a, a, a top priority and make sure that it is a continued priority, I think that is important. And so whether that's from the commission and absolutely on the staff side, we will work in tandem together to make sure that that is put in the proper focus. Thank you. Any other questions before I turn it over to Cherry? All right, Cherry, the floor is yours. Thank you for the report. Wonderful. Absolutely. Yes, thank you, Jamie. And hello, senior commissioners. I'm very pleased to bring some news to you about uh, our upcoming events and activities for May. Uh, we are going to have a demonstration of uh, phone systems for by Clear Captions. They're going to be coming to us uh, down at Grant Park Multipurpose Room on um, Wednesday, May 11th. And uh, Ellie Tehran is the representative of that company. She has been uh, giving us lectures uh, on our speaker series in regards to the uh, new phones because they have updated them. Now they actually address cell phones, iPad, as well as landline phones. So we want to make sure that our community that is uh, has problems hearing uh, could really get a, a better idea of these types of government funded phone systems for uh, personal use. And, and uh, so we're excited about that that's coming. But I just wanted to show what's been happening. Uh, I don't know if you all are aware, but we are finally starting to get more and more people coming to the centers. Um, they're starting to come in for bridge. Uh, we have a new uh, game day that started last Thursday with Rumi, Rumi Cube, uh, Louis Alpha Mahjong, uh, Pinochle, Scrabble, and people uh, came to that. Um, we've also uh, been expanding pickleball, as you all know, the indoor program is started. We have four nets going now. Um, more and more people are coming and enjoying that. Uh, as well as we're going to be looking at having some, a couple of more pickleball days down at Grant Park. Commissioner Ng might be especially happy to hear about that. <laughs> we'll be down there in June. And so we're, I just wanted to share that with you. We are getting more people out. And I just wanted to say, I think it's safe to say, Jamie, that um, our lunch program is coming back. And we're going to get started in June with our lunch program down at Grant on Wednesdays and at the Los Altos Community Center on Thursdays. So we're really looking forward to that happening. Uh, also, we have a special thing happening on May. Let me make sure I get the date right here because it's really uh, an amazing event that Mayor Anita Elander will be uh, highlighted. It's called Growing Unique Vegetables sustainability. It's going to be a workshop. We're going to be talking about beekeeping. That's what the mayor is going to discuss with us. And we also have some volunteers who are going to talk about growing your own plants, uh, edible plants, as well as um, uh, spices and things like that, that you can grow in your home with little flower pots. And so we're going to have that kind of demonstration at the cedar room and out on the patio and just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of that. That'll be uh, Thursday, May 26th from uh, 10 a.m. to 12. So those are the upcoming events in May. And then in June, like I say, we're, we're working on the spotlight. We're putting together a wonderful dynamic June and July program. Uh, a lot of outdoor activities we're going to be offering. And again, the lunch program. So we're all very excited. Oh, and let me say too, that the mini trip was fully uh, full packed. Everyone enjoyed themselves. Uh, we're looking forward to more many trips uh, coming this summer. And so the program is starting to get exciting, more and more exciting. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. Um, it looks like we have some questions, but I also wanted to highlight too, and it's only because I walked down quite a few um, adult 50 plus members down the hall so that they could join the movie um, last uh, Monday, April 21st. About how many, um, I, I want to say I helped at least five or six um, people down the hall. So it, it was pretty well attended, right? Yeah, we had about 12 
uh, 13 people attend this last one. And the, unfortunately, the, <laughs> the Wi-Fi went out in the building in, <laughs> right in the middle of the movie. So what we've offered is for them to come and see the rest of the movie on the third Thursday, and then we'll show the new movie that we're going to offer. So yes, it was a great turnout. And we, now we might have to go to another room because that room is starting to get too crowded. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. So um, Commissioner Basiji, it looks like you yeah, have- a I have two questions. Number one uh, is, is personal. I was just wondering, do you have public Wi-Fi for use of the, uh, the people that come into the center? Yes, we, we do. Good, because there's a question. One of today was to actually come to the center and log on because I, I was waiting for my wife to pick up my wife at the Camino Hospital. So that was one of the options. As it turned out, I didn't have to do that. I came home. So that's for that, for that response. The second thing is that one of the uh, uh, successful program that we have in the hills is called the Hill Walk, so something of that ilk. I think Sarah can can uh, remind what the correct name is. And uh, I happen to walk along uh, a lot of the streets in Los Altos, the neighborhoods, and they're, they're really beautiful. Is there a chance that we could add a neighborhood walk program so for, for yes, to come in and join and then be led by somebody who knows the neighborhoods. You have, that's just a question. That's all it is. I'm not saying that we should or shouldn't do. Engineers might enjoy getting acquainted with their neighborhood and, and really enjoying the beauty of the town. Well, so. That's something to consider. <laughs> thank you. I will look at that. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. So we ready to hear Hi. from Sarah? Yeah. Are, I'm here. Are you guys? able to hear me? We yes. are able to hear you. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> um, so uh, I apologize. I will be looking forward to the transition to Zoom as I had trouble today for whatever reason with Ring Central. So um, anyway, moving on, in January, the Los Altos Hills City Council set their priorities. And this included a community survey to understand understand the town priorities. And um, we are encouraging basically all residents to sign up to take these. We have already um, pushed out one. There are going to be a bunch of small surveys throughout the year. And one can sign up by taking them, by signing up through www.flashvote.com. So, um, we really just want to encourage that no one miss out on an opportunity for your voice to be heard. So I'm letting you know to continue to sign up. Um, and then moving on um, to some of our other uh, city council priorities are bringing back some of these community events. And um, just Last month, we held two, one being a hop and hounds biscuit hunt for dogs, and that was wildly successful. Um, it was raining, and we still had a great showing, of over 100 plus people with their um, dogs in Burn Preserve, an on-leash hunt, and then um, we had a Earth Day celebration that took place. Um, however, that wasn't as well attended um, to the pre-COVID levels. So, um, but that being said, we are really looking forward to our Pathways Run Walk, which will be held this weekend. We have over 430 um, paid registrants. So this is a 5K, 10K, and a one-mile run or walk, and it is um, kind of one of our keystone um, events. We've had this. This will be the um, 20th annual, which is really exciting. Um, so you can still sign up. It will be taking place this Saturday, May 7th at 9 a.m., 
and uh, registrations available on our website. We also have uh, our Parks and Rec Committee will be putting on a cornhole tournament. This is free, open to everyone. And um, that, that form for sign up is also available on our town website. And um, I think transitioning now, maybe I guess I'll mention the town will be holding a town picnic, which is our largest event tailored to Los Altos Hills residents only. The, um, please save the date, uh, Sunday, June 5th from 12.30 to four. And then um, we, will be, we, we will be transitioning back to doing monthly senior walks. We've heard from some residents that they're eager to get back out there. So um, if you are signed up for our notifications through our website on senior programming, um, which we've encouraged all of the uh, senior commissioners to do, I would, you will be alerted once we um, reinstate this, but again, a free opportunity um, to get out there and explore. Um, it will be roughly a flat, so not too many inclines, and um, the route will be tailored to the participants. So there will be a sign up form for that. Um, but again, we're just looking forward to uh, reinstating some of these programs. And then something that I mentioned uh, last month that the city has been partnering with healthy communities in Santa Clara County uh, Public Health. And they have a free upcoming program called the Mind Diet, which will be happening this Wednesday from 11 to noon. It is virtual. And um, again, a sign up is available just on our town website and backslash healthy communities, and you can select that program. So that concludes my report, and I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions for Sarah? Yeah, I, Sarah, can I ask you a question? This, this is Jim Basiji. Yeah. Hi, hi, Sarah. Um, by the way, thank you for mentioning that monthly walk for seniors. I think that's the name I was, <laughs> I was trying to look for when I mentioned my previous comment to, to Cherry. Uh, but the, my question in regards to your uh, presentation is the healthy community. Is that open to members of non Los Altos Hills residents as well as Los Altos Hills? Yes. Residents? Okay. Thank yes, you. it is. That's open to the um, greater community. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, guys. Thank See you, you next. Uh, ne I'll actually be on there next month for sure. Great. Thank you. Do I need to ask for public comments now, Jamie? Yes, you can go okay. ahead and ask. Are there for any public comments for this? I will give it just a minute to see. And I am not currently seeing any hands raised, Chair Cohen. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, the next item and last are future agenda items. There's one listed so far, the joint meeting with the city council tomorrow evening at five o'clock. Do we know who's attending that, Jamie? We have a list of people. They are CP to you. They did. And so, um, as I mentioned in my email, we are required to have a quorum and we do have a quorum of commissioners um, that will be present tomorrow evening. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited because we get to kick it off. Um, and again, it's um, when I did the library commission um, at the, the end of last year in November, they roughly give 30 to 45 minutes. And so assuming, you know, each commission takes about 30 minutes, um, it, you kind of guesstimate where you might fall if you go second, third, fourth, or fifth. But we know for sure we're going to be starting at five tomorrow night. And so I will be there um, to support. And so um, but we do have a quorum, which is great. Um, so it should be a very good uh, meeting with city council tomorrow night. Wonderful. I have one question about that. Will we get an updated work plan before that with the, yes. with the, with the 
items that we discussed tonight and the additions? No, absolutely. Great question, Chair Cohen. Um, so um, Candace and I will definitely uh, talk um, later on this afternoon to determine what time frame um, we might be able to get that information out. So I will keep the commission updated um, and I will send out an email later this afternoon to confirm that. That's great. I'd like to clarify one point that has to do with the work plan. And that is under the outdoor spaces and buildings. When we mention Grant Park, I think we should really clarify what we mean by the Grant, why Grant Park, that we endorse the needs of Grant Park, the electrical system being upgraded, the HVAC system being upgraded, and um, apparently there's no warm water. That wasn't mentioned, but I think we should specify that here because we have an opportunity as Roberta's suggestion and Lynette also recommended that we keep up on that. So if we could be sure to add that in that box, would that be okay? I'm not sure that clearly got put, you know, put in that box for tomorrow night's meeting, but I think we should have that. Thank you so much. And also, are there any other future agenda items that you would like to add? Bill. Not an agenda item, but it would be important if we got copies of that work plan draft, updated draft, I'd like to print out so that I would be able to, Tony and I can present that. We're gonna, now, be, you're gonna send it to us, Jamie, right? Yeah. Now, that is correct. Um, I will confirm the time frame um, once Candace and I are able to um, uh, briefly chat about when that might be able to be. And so I will send out a, um, an email to the commission to give you an ETA of when that can be. Um, we are in a, a kind of a tight turnaround because we obviously have um, that tomorrow evening, but I will update the commission later this afternoon. Thank you. Kevin? Is, uh, is this going to be on Ring Central or Zoom or? <laughs> it, no. <laughs> The, it will still, um, so the e meeting tomorrow evening will still be on Ring Central. It will be on webinar. So it will be still this same format. Um, I did email, obviously the um, city clerk's office has the, the roster. And so you will get an individual panelist link just as you did for this meeting today. Um, and so Hopefully going forward, especially for June, we will go to Zoom. It will just take a little bit of a transition. Thank you. Okay. So the future agenda items focus on tomorrow's evening with city council. We are scheduled to have a June meeting. Are there any future agenda items for the June meeting? The only other I will suggest is to continue to keep the work plan as a future agenda item because you will want to debrief your joint meeting with council tomorrow and then you will have an opportunity to really put your stamp and say this is our finalized work plan and we can do that recommended approval in June. Thank you. Uh, totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are there any other items that you would like to add? Okay, I think we're good. I understand we don't need a motion to adjourn, so I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Now, wonderful. It was great seeing everyone this afternoon, and Thank I will you. see everyone tomorrow evening. Thank, Thank you so much, everyone. And